And over the course of the next five minutes of you guys watching this video, I'm going to transform it into a fantastic professional quality home studio. I'm going to tell you how much it all costs, explain all the way through exactly what I'm doing and how you can do it yourself. And if you've got any questions, ask me in the description. And myself and my friend Tom, who you'll see in upcoming videos, We'll be able to answer them as soon as possible and tell you guys how you can get this exact same sound, talk you through it completely. Without further ado, I'm going to jump to commentary, so by the magic of YouTube, commentary. Okay guys, I'm sure the quality of the vocals is much better now. I'm on a proper microphone, I'm using my SM7B. And uh, what we're looking at right now is the main shape of the room. You've got this lovely square space or not quite a square. The length of the room is the way that the desk's facing. I want to work with the length of the room and then between the chair and the window is the width. That's the way I'm not going to work because you always want to work towards the length giving bass frequencies more of a time to uh, become full and rich. If you work with a short space for a room and don't kill the bass frequencies properly, you'll end up getting a boxy sound. Now, what we're looking at here, there's two main problems. One is that weird alcove space that I'm gonna get into in a minute uh, where the wall's been knocked down. And the other is this quarter pipe. What I'm gonna try and do with this is it's a horrible shape to have. You don't want that in a studio but I'm gonna try and use it to build a, uh, a cloud, which is what you call sound absorption panels put onto the roof. Uh, build a kind of a slope cloud that goes over the top of my mixing station, which is a really good idea just generally in any studio to block off unwanted frequencies and you know deaden the sound to get an honest mix. So here we're looking in this little alcove section. I think we're gonna pan back to the main room now and show the space, but I wanna talk about this alcove section. It's obviously the wall's been knocked down. It goes down a couple of steps and then there's this weird sloped roof. I've tried to think of every which way to use this little alcove space, but nothing will work. You can't stand up straight down here. It's a very, you know, I mean, I'm six foot three, so I can't stand up in most places, but um, it's a very short space. And this weird square section in the corner, which I thought at first, maybe I could do vocals in there. It's too small. Um, as I say, bass frequencies wouldn't have a proper time to, you know, uh, become whole and it would try putting up temporary sound absorption panels down there recording it's the space is just too small the sound becomes deadened and you, as I say you get that sound that like you are recording in a wardrobe you don't want that sound it's horrible uh, things still need to have life to them so yeah I don't know what I'm doing here I'm just kind of messing about I think just showing you how small this space is but that's been the main problem is that frequencies are getting push down there into that odd space and then almost like an acoustic guitar they're coming back out of the whole tenfold. So what we're looking at here is the materials that I've used. You can uh, pause this video right now and check out the list on the screen of the price and exactly what I used. Um, I mean that's a lot of material. It's a lot of material but I'll tell you what, doing it yourself is way cheaper than buying it from uh, proper audio equipment centres or websites such as gear for music. I mean they do everything that you need but you pay through the teeth for it. I mean, this was just a quick little rundown to uh, B&Q, which we got in the UK. I think it's like Home Depot or something in America. And uh, wherever you are, I know everyone's always got this sort of massive DIY chain, isn't there? Yeah, so having a quick look at the uh, rock wall just here. And you've got the carpet underlay, 10 mil behind it, 50 mil uh, rock wall. And we used uh, two layers of that in the end because I actually had so much of it. Like, screw it, let's just see if we can get the layers in there. And uh, I don't have paid for it, I might as well use it. So here's the first step just here. What we're doing now, we're building the barrier wall that's going to get rid of that horrible alcove section. I've got a chipboard with a 10 mil carpet underlay. I'm basically just laying it the, underlay, the chipboard on the underlay. And all I'm going to do is cut out. Uh, one sheet. What we actually did was double it over and use uh, two sheets of carpet underlay or two layers rather of carpet underlay on that wall to give extra sound absorption. So here you can see my lovely dad cutting it out while I take a photo of him doing all the hard work. But what we did was we measured it all out. Obviously, we were very careful to kind of, you know, my dad always says uh, measure twice, cut once. I think that's a big deal. Basically, you have to check your measurements, make sure you've got it right in the first place. So we've got the two layers just here. And what we're doing next is we're going to staple them on. We use so many staples. We want to make sure that once it's up, you know, it's not going anywhere. 
Uh, it's there I am basically actually doing some work, which is a, a rarity. And we're doing the two layers. This is the first section. What we want to first do is get this wall in and see if trapping the alcove off is going to make a huge deal. And I tell you what, it really did. As soon as we shut the alcove uh, space off, it was just like I say, it was like putting um, a mute over the you know, sound hole and acoustic guitar, it just deadened the sound instantly. And it was fantastic. You can see there, I've uh, got the two layers on. And uh, what I'm doing just now, right now, is just cutting it all, trimming it all down to make it look professional, make it look neat. I tell you what, we got through so many pairs of scissors doing this. It was ridiculous. They blunted all the scissors. So there you can see my mum's foot <laughs> and leaving uh, all the material uh, to her because she's got a lot of experience with this kind of stuff. She's absolutely fantastic, uh, uh, this kind of stuff. So she led the, and I was just popping staples in when I needed to really and just doing what she told me to do as I've done my entire life. So here you can see uh, what we're doing now is putting this overall nice cloth finish onto the sound wall. You've got the two sheets of carpet underlay. You've then got the chipboard behind it, and then you've got the nice material to make it you know, look nice and so bits aren't falling all in my studio. It's just uh, my mum there running up some things, and um, what you can see here is how we do the corners. The corners are important. You want it to look professional, so you're almost doing it like a Christmas present. You're wrapping the corners in, making sure all the time the material is stretched right over. The last thing you want is huge creases down the front of a wall, especially when you're going to be looking at it all day in your studio. There I am, very proud, like a proud father bear of, <laughs> of uh, my one of the sheets that we're going to be using the wood, or as they're actually known, baffle boards, basically. The baffle boards put against the wall. And now we're moving on to the sound absorption boxes, the other big installation in the studio. So what we did, drilled holes, used wood glue and also screws in each corner just to make sure they stayed square, stayed level and nothing's going to fall apart. Here you can see my dad's hands once again being amazing and uh, putting the screws into the wooden boxes, trying to get them all together. And hopefully now as we see a picture, there they are. I've got three large ones, three clouds, which once again are sound absorption boxes that go on the roof are called clouds. And then three um, sound absorption panels for the walls. They're slightly different the ways we did the roof ones, the way we did the wall ones. So here what we basically did was we measured it all out so that the rock wall that we'd ordered... Uh, is it rock? Well, actually, it's a roofing insulation. It's an acoustic roofing insulation and um, made sure that basically the stuff we ordered, the boxes were built so it just cut out and the width was perfect. You can see here the difference between the roof ones. The roof ones just had two panels of the roofing absorption in, whereas the wall ones that, to the right just there have the carpet underlay on the front as well. We had some spare carpet underlay, so I thought I'd make the wall ones thicker as, um, I don't know, it just seems like they're getting more of the bass frequencies and they're going to need it basically when you're recording. It makes a huge difference. And uh, the roof ones obviously weight a concern. So we put the back material on these ones now and you can see what I've done is I've basically strapped the front. The last thing you want when something's hanging off the roof is to be sagging down. So we've got panels of wood and then um, duct tape holding the whole thing together. Duct tape is stapled in. Here's one of the uh, wall panels again. You can see these ones we put carpet underlay on top of the box, just like we did in the wall and stapled it down. And the back um, material's already on, pinned on. And what we're doing now, putting nice, thick, stretchy, professional looking um, lycra onto the front of it. This stuff was quite expensive, but it was worth the money. I think I ended up getting it for about £3.50 a metre. Uh, because I needed, I think, 25 metres in the end. <laughs> and uh, you see, we stretched it right out, kept them taut. And I mean, it's just worked wonders. So what we're looking at now is installing the wall. We first of all, you know, got made sure it all fit. We always give ourselves a little bit of room to work with. And the way we got them to stay there was by using picture hangers. You can see just here the little gold thing. That's a picture hanger. And we just simply pop two of those in the top of each panel and it's worked perfectly. What you're looking at right now, all the baffle boards are made. So say the three big clouds that go on the roof and then four for the walls. 
Uh, what we did next was fit wooden panels to the roof so we could hang our uh, clouds off them because, I mean, we I've just got a, um, a kind of a plasterboard roof that really doesn't like to take weight. So we wanted to disperse the weight better. So there you can see the two roof panels that we've got up. And hopefully next should show you the cloud that comes off that quarter pipe. It was a huge problem. What we did, we used these chains. We used chains and um, screws to suspend it and create a cloud over the uh, the monitoring station, which makes a huge difference. Here it is, the final uh, version of Technic Studios, how it's looking right now. You've got your three clouds and a roof, the one over the monitoring station, then the two straight up on the roof. You've got your baffle board wall using carpet underlay. And then as we look, oh, you can see just behind here to the right, we've got two uh, sound absorption panels capturing the base frequencies, making sure getting no muddiness coming to the mix off the back wall. And then I've covered the, covered the first two mirror points <clears throat> excuse me, on the left and the right to make sure obviously you're not getting any unwanted uh, noise in your mix. I didn't cover the two second mirror points because I didn't want the room to sound too dead. Also, there's a window there and the door and it just seemed a lot of hassle when the room's already sounding great, maybe in the future. And that sums up kind of how I did it, guys, and how the studio is looking now. Uh, yeah, back to the studio. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, all I can say is, hit the like button, subscribe to see loads more of these creative videos. Anything